Hi, so I'm in Melbourne, Australia, and I'm with yet another customer, and he has gone a very long way to building an amazing dedicated home cinema space in a very difficult location. He's made a lot of changes. Let's take a look. Obviously from here, this is a standard looking home. As we come around the corner though, we see that he's built a really great cinema space. Okay, so Simon's had a home theatre here for some time and it's been going through a process of evolution. Tell me a little bit of the history of it. Well, this would be the third iteration of the system. Yep. So I've gone from m &K, a full m &K system 5.1 to a 6.1 to 7.1. I then proceeded to, uh, to upgrade to power sound audio yep. and um, embraced Atmos and bought an uh, Anthem AVM 60 and um, so when i went a 7.1.4 mm -hmm. uh, setup uh, single sub as well uh jbc projector in five and um yeah so um and then after obviously after many years of lusting over a trinov i contacted andrew and um, enzo and decided to pull the plug on an altitude um, 16 mm -hmm. and that's been my dream for ever since i've ever heard of trinov yep. and um and that's I've, where we first met, really, isn't it? Because I came over here and calibrated the unit, but your room was very different then. Very different. Yep. So when you see uh, the shots of the room, I basically had bifold doors. I had a grey ceiling, um, dulux brood colour for the surrounding walls. Um, so the bifold doors go out to, a, to the hallway for the front door. Mm. Um, I've got an open area on the right leading to a dining room slash kitchen. Mm. So... Just with some just with some planning, I decided I didn't really want to see my speakers anymore at the front. So I contacted a builder and we basically went with a acoustically transparent screen. Mm -hmm. um, but decided to sell all my power sound audio speakers after watching a few videos on Cricks and, and you've, yourself. You've, you've decided to go with Cricks, yeah. I absolutely yeah. did. Yeah. So I went to the <laughs> Hi Fi show, I got to hear their setup and I went online, looked at all their new range, mm. the Megaphonics range in particular, and the wall of sound mm. as well. Mm. Decided to go the, the um, Megaphonics in walls mm. um, uh, for the surrounds. I went Megaphonics mm. uh, surrounds. Um, back channels are also Megaphonics and just recently the Hyper Phoenixes for the Atmos. Yep. I think it's a really good decision. The you know We were talking about this yesterday when we were calibrating. The, um, the Megaphonics are a great speaker and the beauty of, of what you've done is you've chosen not just to use them for your LCRs, but you've used them for your surrounds. So you've got these really powerful speakers, really great dynamics, really good clarity. And so you're able to drive a, a decent signal for your entire surround. And then you've got the angled Hyperphonics 45s, as you said, on the ceiling, which drives the sound mm -hmm. here. And of course, then you've modified the room. So the doors are gone, you've sealed that wall off, you had carpet put in, um, you've had a curtain put across the entrance to the room so you can black the room off and um, you've had some acoustic treatment applied um, and then I rocked up the other day and we, st we started playing with the sound. Mm -hmm. So the biggest change I think was putting the carpet in the acoustic panels, the implementation of going full cricks as you said with the compression mm. drivers. Mm. Um, always, as my brother always said, um, you can never have too much power. Mm. So even if you don't use it, you know it's there, the headroom's mm. there, mm. And, it's, and it makes it easier for a calibrator like yourself mm. yep. um, to calibrate. Yep. So there's no limitations. Mm. And having all the, obviously the same brand, same drivers, makes it a lot easier as yep. well to calibrate. Yeah. Um, also, my choices of going from a single subwoofer to dual SVS 16 Ultras. Um, yep, that was a good call to get the two subs. So again, watching your videos, mm. um, I'd love to have four, but probably destroy my house, but as these two already do. So um, after your calibration yesterday, I'm just absolutely, yeah, um, I just can't believe that how the system sounds now. It's it's a revelation. And, and as I said to you, so when we played the track out of um, the, the car chase out of Ready Player Ready One, Player again, One again, again, yeah, yeah, again yeah, and yeah. I've watched yeah. that so many times yeah. and demoed that to mm. many people and myself yep. as I change my system it's the first mm. pretty much the first mm. track I play and I think I said to you you said oh what do you think and I must say I choked up a little bit and mm. I was um and I said it's I'm, I've got, I'm, I'm emotional mm. I got an emotional response from that yeah. and it's like I've heard it it's like I heard it for the first time yeah we like to make grown men cry yeah thanks so. <laughs> <laughs> I no, look, back tears. it is it is a good thing and I think that you know we, we've had a lot of conversations over the last couple of days and also I've spent some time with your amazing brother as well and you know, hi to him hi Justin um and um 
I, I what I wanted to say is you guys aren't um, just guys who have a home theatre. You have you and your brother have been passionate about cinema since day dot, basically. Mm -hmm. And in talking to both of you, you know the, the passion for for the movies, the passion for the history of it, the passion for you know the development and and even you know the games, mm. e everything you know. And so this room to me seems to be so much more than just somewhere where you come and watch a movie. Mm. It seems to be really connected to you, to your brother, to your history. It seems really significant to me. Mm. We have a sort of a story for every movie that we've seen over the over the many years. Yeah, There's yeah. always a story mm. behind it. So when we do watch it in here, it's, it brings back a lot of memories. Yep. And it makes a bit more emotional experience as well. Mm. So I'm not just sitting here buying the picture and the sound. There's mm. a lot of other memories that come with that. Yep. So it's like a combined experience. Yeah. Um, last night we watched that. Was it 1982, the year of the geek, was it? Or what was the name of it? Yeah, it's like great, Greatest Year 1982, so, I think it was, yeah. what it was called. And it was very... Um, I'll put a link in the description below. But it's, it was a, roughly a four-part series. Um, but you'll be able to find it. And have a look because it really speaks to the history of theatre and, and especially 1982 and what a great year that was for cinema. And one of the things that caught me was stories about, you know, six cinema complexes that are running the same movie, mm. you know, with Star Wars, I think it was. Yep. And they were running the same movie in every cinema and there were queues up the street. Which is why they would know. call it a blockbuster. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it yep. just is blocks and blocks of people just lining up to see these movies. Yeah, yeah. And I don't recall that happening recently. And... And I think that movies, um, you know, now in, in a recent video that I'm not sure if we've released it yet, but it's coming out soon. We're talking about what um, uh, Disney have done in Australia, where they're stopping all, you know, physical media. It's not just the fact that you have to stream your movies, but there's no more covers, no more artwork. There's none of this memorabilia, mm. none of the collectible stuff. Um, I assume that means there's no more artists working in that industry, you know, um, and, you know, one of the things that we talked about was the fact that you kind of had to earn the privilege of going to a movie. You had to travel to the cinema. You had to wait in line for your ticket. You know, ev everything, you know, it wasn't just a press of a button sitting in your chair at home, was it? You, no. You had to make the effort and, you know, gather up a few friends, organise some time, get your tickets and go and, and watch the movie. And I was a cinema manager then and I remember those days. And I think what's happening now is people like yourself and your brother are almost sort of holding the fort for, you know, for the history of cinema. Um, and I think, you know, we all look forward to seeing some new, really great movies coming out, but it, it sort of makes you wonder sometimes with, with streaming and everything going that way. Anyway, um, we also had a bit of a tweak with the projector today. Um, that was interesting. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we had a look. We, he's got a JVC. We had a slight problem with the projector. It suddenly decided it wasn't going to play anything that was in 60 hertz. <laughs> Never seen that before in my life. Anyway, rebooted the projector after a lot of cursing and swearing. That's all back again. But that was interesting because we could play movies, but we didn't get menus, did That's we? That's right. That well, it wouldn't be a normal day if something didn't happen It wouldn't like be a normal that. day if something wasn't abnormal. A absolutely. Yeah. So, but look, I'm, I'm really, really happy in the sound, with the sound in here. I did say, and I, I you know, hand on heart, the, the clarity and detail coming from these megaphonic surrounds is really crisp, really clean. And we, we watched a bit of Blade Runner 2049. Um, we obviously watched um, Ready Player One again. Um, and what was happening in this room is a real separation. You know, the, there's, there's some real tonal detail. So yeah, in the lower frequencies, you could tell the difference between Wrecking Balls and Godzilla's and, and you know, um, and all of the different bass tones w were really distinct and, and clear and yet also the separation of sounds from voices from you know background effects uh and the positioning of sound you know, around the room is fantastic as well i'm really really happy with this room i would say this room is a bit of a surprise because you've got a big void on the right that mm. sort of leads off into the house and then you've got a wall on the left and that would normally unbalance a room but i think that you know with the way the room has worked out and with having um, you'll probably see in, in the the, the uh, footage, but in having a, a surround in exactly the correct position uh, on the right hand side, mirror image obviously to the one on the left hand side has, has really helped maintain that. That the speaker is not way over on the far wall, you know, so you get a very similar image from the left and right speakers. So yeah, look, it's great, mate. And I um, I should take a photo. I've I've been sleeping in this room. 
So haven't yeah, I? You have. So, yeah. Um, Thank God for the soundproofing because the snoring. It's good. I know. I know. I, Thank I, you. I try to keep it down. Oh, my snoring. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, so I want to thank you for your hospitality. No, I'd to thank you oh, for coming yeah. over and um, doing it. It's brilliant. It, you know, I, I want to thank you for trusting us, you know, with your equipment. And, um, you know, I wish you and your brother all the very, very best, mate. Enjoy this room. Get the most you can out of it. I will. Thank you so much. Been a pleasure. No worries. Thank all you. Right, mate. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.